Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Mike Davies and in this video I'll be showing you how to create a glass sphere or lens ball effect using GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.22 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here. You can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member. And I have tons of free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. And as I mentioned, you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design, and I'll include all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. I'll be using this free stock photo from Pexels for today's tutorial. Click the little download arrow, and I went with the first option here. Click free download. So here is the composition we'll be making for today's tutorial. So it looks like a 3D glass sphere or like a lens ball. This tutorial uses all built-in tools found inside a GIMP. So let's dive in here. We'll start by opening up the background photo and I can do that by going to file open or open recent in my case. And I'll just click on the photo I wanna use here. It'll ask me if I wanna convert this to GIMP's native sRGB color space and I will, so I'll hit convert. Here is our original photo. And I'm gonna start by creating a layer with a circle shape on it. We're gonna use this circle to create our sphere as well as some other things. So let's come over here and click to create a new layer. And I'll name this circle, fill it with transparency and click okay. So now what I'll do is draw a circle in the center of my composition and I can figure out the center by going to image, guides, new guide by percent, and for direction, we'll go with horizontal to start, and then we'll go with 50% for the position and click OK. And we'll do the same for vertical. So image, guides, new guide by percent, and we'll just change the direction to vertical. There are our center guides. So now we're going to grab the ellipse select tool from the toolbox. So you can use the E shortcut key or just click on that. And then close to the middle here, we're going to click and drag, hold the Alt key, and right now I have my aspect ratio fixed to one to one. So let me just release that right there. You can see the fixed aspect ratio option here inside the tool options is checked and it's set to one colon one. That ensures we draw a perfect circle and once our circle is drawn, I'm gonna come over here and reset my colors to black and white. And I'll click and drag the black color here into the selection area and release. Then making sure I'm clicked on my composition, I'll hit Control shift a to deselect the selection area. Next, we're going to warp the background layer so that it looks like the realistic warping that would occur inside of a glass sphere. So to do that, we'll come over here and let's first double click on the name of this layer and name it background. Hit the enter key. So now let's duplicate this. And next I'll add what's called the sphere eyes filter to this. So I'll go to filters, distorts, and come down here to sphere eyes. So this is going to make our image have this sort of bulging effect as if it had some sort of concave lens applied to it. And I'm pretty much going to keep all of the settings set to the defaults. So the mode is radial. The only option I'm gonna adjust is the angle of view. If I increase this, it's going to increase the amount of bulging happening with that image there. So it makes it bend outwards more. And that just gives us a more intense effect. And I'll click okay to apply that. Next, what I'll do is scale this so that it fits inside the circle. But first I wanna place guides around the circle so we know where to stop and we can easily snap our scaling to the guides. So I'll come over here and alt click on the circle layer. You can also click on the circle layer itself and go to layer, transparency, alpha two selection if alt clicking doesn't work on here. And then we're gonna go to image, guides, new guides from selection. So that's gonna give us guides around the circle shape. And finally, we can come down here to the background copy layer. And let me hit Control Shift A to deselect that selection area. So now I'm gonna hit Shift S. That's gonna grab the scale tool here from the toolbox. And then I'm gonna scale this down. And if I hold the Control key, it'll scale it from the center. And if I hold the Shift key, it'll maintain the original aspect ratio of the image. So I'm holding control and shift until I get about to the top and bottom guides there. 
Once you're approximately there, you can click and drag a single side inwards, like so. And as long as your chain link icon is unlocked here, it'll only drag that single side. If this is locked and you try to drag this in, it'll drag the whole image. So just hit Control Z, unlock the chain link icon, and then drag a single side in until it snaps to the guides there. You can also double check that these are aligned properly to the top and bottom guides. And once you're ready, come over here and click scale. Of course, I have a couple of problems here. First off, you can see the outer edges of the original image. And second, the circle is obscuring this. So let's start by coming over here. We'll click and drag this to the top of the stacking order. And then we're going to alt click on that circle layer again to bring up that selection. Or once again, click on that circle layer and go to layer transparency alpha two selection. Then what we'll do is right click on the background layer and go to add layer mask. Under initialize layer mask two, I'll choose selection and click add. And that will get rid of the corners there of that original image. So once again, I'll hit control shift A to deselect the selection area. Now we're going to start the process of making the sphere look more realistic. So to do that, we're gonna add some shading to this and we're also gonna flip it around because if you were looking at a real glass sphere, in many cases, the light is refracted to a point where it's going to flip that original image and it's gonna look upside down. So we'll start off with that. So I'll hit shift F on my keyboard or I can click and hold on the transform group and come down here to the flip tool and make sure the direction under the tool options is set to vertical. Come over here and make sure you're clicked on the actual layer and not on the layer mask. And then we're gonna hover our mouse over this composition here, the circle shape, and we're going to click on it and that will flip that upside down. And so that has that nice realistic refracted light look. Once I've done that, I'm gonna create my shading. And instead of just applying some guesswork shading to this, I'm gonna use the sphere designer tool, which is found directly inside of GIMP. It's built in here. We're gonna use that tool to create the realistic sphere shading here. So to start, I'll come over to the circle layer and click on it and I'm gonna duplicate it. And then I'm gonna click and drag this to the very top. Next, we're going to shrink the size of this layer down to the circle. So we'll go to layer, crop to content. That'll crop the layer size down. And finally, we don't need the actual circle in here. So I'll hit the delete key. That'll get rid of that. What we want is the layer here to be the same size as our sphere. And that's gonna help make things easier with the sphere designer. So speaking of that, we'll go to help and go to search and run a command, or you can just use the forward slash key on your keyboard. And I'll type sphere, double click on sphere designer. So here is the sphere designer. These are the default settings. And what I'll do first is come over here to light and under colors, you'll see this is giving us that greenish color. I don't really want that. So I'm gonna click on here and change this to something like a black color. You guys can make this whatever color you want. And I'll come over and click okay. So here you can see we have some nice sphere shading going on with very little work. All I wanna do is just change the main light source, which is gonna be the white. And so I'll come up top here to light, the first light option. And you'll see we have the white color here. Under transformations, I can change the positioning of this. So I'll use the X position to shift this over to the right. And the Y position to shift this down. And you can play around with the Z position if you wanna decrease the size of the light or increase it. And it also slightly adjusts the position of it. So because my light is coming in from the lower left, we kinda of want the light escaping out of the lower right portion of the sphere. So it looks like the light is passing through it. You guys can play around with that. I'll click okay. So next I need to scale the sphere up so that it matches with the sphere below. So to do that, I'll hit Shift S on my keyboard to grab the scale tool. And I'll make sure the little chain icon is locked right here so it's linked up. And then I'm gonna click and drag this outward while holding the control key. And we'll scale it to about right there and we'll just come up here and make sure it is lined up on all sides. So once it's good to go, I'll hit scale and hold control and zoom out with my mouse wheel. Once we have scaled the sphere up, now we can duplicate this. So I'll come over to the circle copy layer which I'm gonna double click and name the sphere, hit the enter key. Now I'll come down here and duplicate that sphere layer so we have two spheres. And let me come over and grab my move tool. 
So now that we have the two sphere layers, what we wanna do is change the layer modes of these spheres, and that's going to help us make the lighting on our circle look more like a sphere, so it'll make it look more realistic. So I'll start with the top layer. I'm gonna change this to overlay. So that's going to help only the lighter portion of the shading stand out. And then on the layer below, we're going to change this layer mode to linear burn. So that'll keep pretty much only the darker portions. Of course, this lighting doesn't look right, so we're going to adjust the opacity of these two layers. So with the bottom sphere layer, we're gonna decrease this to somewhere in the 20s. And then over here to the sphere copy layer on the top, we'll decrease this between 60 and 70. So that's gonna give us some nice realistic shading. If I wanted to get rid of these guides, I can go to View, Show Guides, and that'll get rid of those. Sticking with shading of the sphere, we're gonna add an outer glow to the outside of the sphere. So we'll do that by alt-clicking on one of these sphere layers, and then we'll come down here and create a new layer, and I'll name this Sphere Glow. Hit the Enter key, come over to the Paths tab, and we're gonna convert this selection to a path using this icon. And I'll come over here and click to stroke the path. So I'll set the line width to 10 and the line style I'll keep set to a solid line. I'm also gonna switch my colors over here so that white is my foreground color and I'll click stroke. So that'll stroke only inside the selection area. And now what I wanna do is go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're gonna turn the blur up on here. So all this is happening inside the sphere since I have the selection area there. And so I set this to just above 20 and I'll click OK. Let's come back over here to the layers panel. Control Shift A to deselect that. And now I'll come over here to mode and I'm gonna change this to a different layer mode. So in this case, I'll go with linear light and we can adjust the opacity of this. And you can see that's helping give this sphere a glow around the edges. So I'm basically going to just copy this layer now. So I'll come over here and create a duplicate, except I'm going to change the color of the glow. Let's come over here and we're gonna lock the alpha channel of this layer. Then I'll come over here to my foreground color, grab the eyedropper tool, and let's just grab one of the orange colors coming from the sun rays. So there you'll see a nice orange and I'll click OK. Now I'm just gonna click and drag this onto the layer and that'll change the lighting there of that to orange. And finally, I'm just gonna adjust this from linear light to burn. And I can also adjust the opacity of this. It doesn't have to be turned down as much. And we can also try linear burn here. I do like burn better. Now we're going to apply the finishing touches to our composition. So in this case, it's pretty much just going to be applying some blur to the background as well as to the sphere itself. So let's start with the background layer. I'll click on this layer and I'll come over here and click to duplicate it. On the duplicated layer, I'm gonna come over to Filters, Blur, Lens Blur. This is just going to emulate depth of field produced by your camera, so I can increase the radius to increase the strength of this effect. And if I want some of the highlights to come out more, I can increase the highlight factor. That makes this look like a more realistic lens blur. So here's a before, here is an after. I'll click OK. Finally, I do wanna add a bit of depth of field to the actual ball itself. So what I'll do is I'll hide the two background layers and I'm gonna put everything on its own visible layer. So I'll go to Layer, New from Visible. And I can shift click on this. So now all of the elements for my sphere are on a single layer. And now I'll unhide that background layer. So on the visible layer here, what I'll do is come over to Filters, Blur, and we'll go to Focus Blur. This is a new feature that came out with GIMP 2.10.20. And what I'll do is just increase this outer ring and then increase the size of this inner ring by clicking and dragging it. And we're just adding a bit of blur to the outer edge of the sphere. And we can either bring the midpoint in or out to add more or less blur. And I'll click OK. And there's our final composition. 
All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.